Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about private GPT. So I'm going to run my own workloads on my own machine and using this tooling in order to talk to a document. And it's a very cool, interesting tool. And just before this video here, I was arguing with this private GPT about a movie I have watched a lot of times. The movie of Top Gun, of course. First off, I asked uh, what the evil actor in the Heat movie was, and they figured out that it probably is Al, Cap uh, Al Pacino and, and so on. But I don't really know that much about Heat, so I asked what sports do they play in Top Gun. I know that they are playing volleyball, but they are pretty much not there. They're talking about uh, high-performance combat training uh, naval aviator, which is the main topic of the video. And I say oh, they're pretty sure they're playing something on the beach, right? And after a lot of it, it says on the second question here, do not play any sports with a ball on a beach. Instead, they partake in various navigation training exercises and competitions. The famous scene on the beach involves volleyball game between Maverick and Iceman. And it was like, volleyball is a game on a beach when you play with a ball. So I'm not really sure if it's understanding the movie plot at all. <laughs> Uh, and then I was like, okay, they are singing in a bar, right? And I, I wanted to know what the song was and I couldn't remember what the song was. And I was like, ah, no, it's not that one. Uh, what song is they playing on the piano? And I was like, ah, they, they don't play anything on the piano. They are, uh, uh, they are actually playing the iconic song, Take Me, on, Take Me to the Top with Berlin when uh, one of the few final scenes. And I was like, well, I'm pretty sure there are female characters that are uh, Ode, but I wanted to wood, but I typed it wrong by playing the piano and singing and Still they didn't get it. It's like no no no. They are not playing the piano uh, with Kelly uh, Gilligan's is singing your lost that loving feeling to Maverick during a private moment. No, she's not <laughs> It's just the song that is playing during that but fine but then I had to Google it. So YouTube told me that it, of course, it's Great Balls of Fire uh, that is sung by Goose. So uh, we had a little bit of discussion, and I had to Google it to get the right answer. And the information in this private GPT is from um, 2023 March. So you can't really ask about anything recent and so on. But this is just normal chat GPT behavior. So any Llama network should be able to answer these kind of questions. But let's install this one. So first I'm gonna take the, uh, the Git repository and clone it down. So on GitHub there is a user called iMartinez, which has this private GPT. So I will clone that down, not a large repo repository. We will go into that repository. I will set a parameter here. So P uh, GPT uh, profiles Olama. And I'm running on an Ubuntu machine and I have already installed something called uh, poetry. So if you want to have poetry, uh, you need to uh, install Python dash poetry if you don't have that already. And they, uh, want you to use Python 3.11. If you don't have that, you could install it by using PyEnv. Uh, um, this version of Ubuntu has Python uh, 3.11 as default, so I didn't have to do anything there, but keep that in mind. So in order to install the actual dependencies for this repository, we use Poetry install. So this will install the dependencies that are already there. Then we will specify a couple of extras. And these are not extras, these are required. So first off we want a UI, so we get this nice uh, UI interface. Then we want to use the LLMS uh, Olama. And this is, uh, so we have the actual model that is run. Then we want to use LMS LLA CPP so it can compile new uh, embeddings. Then I want the embeddings of o, uh, LLA uh, Olama. 
And then the embeddings of Hugging Face and we also want a Vector Stall Qdrant. And this is something that is saving the information we give to it in an SQLite store pretty much, but in a vector storage way. So these are the dependencies I found that was required to do the actual uh, storage and running this model with my own data. So after running that, it's uh, gonna install all those dependencies in this directory. And then I need to run make setup. So this will set up the dependencies uh, or the repository with everything that is required. And doing this, it will download a bunch of things. It will download the PyTorch models. It will download the Minestral 7 billion instructions um, or parameters. So there is a bunch of things that will be downloaded here around, I would say, uh, eight gigabytes of data will be downloaded and be ready for you when you run this setup command. So now that the setup is done, we can run this model. I'm just gonna do make run and this will uh, start up the web interface so we can actually use this model. And it takes a little while and now it says it's running on port 8001. So if we go over here again, we can clear this and we can say uh, who is the uh, actor playing Harry Potter in the movies? And what do we get as an answer? This is a pretty simple one in, with the information that was back in 2003. It should not have any problems with this. The actor playing Harry Potter in the movies is Daniel. Radcliffe, however, the question is within the uh, context have uh, been explicitly mentioned the names of both the characters and the actor. Okay. Um, and now I want to query a couple of files here. So what I'm going to do here is upload a file. I'm going to choose this uh, PDF file here and upload that. So it will start in ingesting that uh, PDF file and we see that it starts processing here. So if we go back here, we can see that it ingesting the file, it's pretty much uploading it and it extracting all the text from it. And when that text it is extracted, it will fine tune the model with that information. And this will take a while. I wanted it to start up here so we can actually see the fine tuning process, but it takes a while because this is 1300 pages, this PDF, and it has all the information about uh, PDF. So you see here it's generating embeddings and parsing the nodes and so on. So this will take a while and I will get back to you when this uh, PDF is ingested. So now it seems like that file is ingested. So let's see here. Well, it says that the PDF file is ready here. So this is the PDF specification. So let's ask it a PDF question. What is the difference between media box, uh, media, we can say media, art, crop, and um, what's the fourth one called? Uh, media, art, crop, and trim box question mark. So what's the difference between all these kind of boxes? See if it can figure this one out. It has 60 seconds or something like that to run it through. It's querying my files. So it should use the context of the file in order to figure out this. And I can hear but my computer is working. So <laughs> it's using my um, Nvidia graphics card here. So let's see if we get an answer. We could check uh, if we like uh, SMI here. So it's currently using about four uh, gigabytes of memory, 57% of the GPU. Ah, now it's starting to answer here. According to the context provided, a media box represents the physical sites of a printed page. The art box is used to position the content 
uh, and ignoring during the printing. The crop box is intended size of the printed image and should be the same as the media box during printing. The trim box represents the final size of the printed piece and after trimming and should also be the same as the media box during printing. The bleed box, which is not mentioned in the figure, is the area beyond the trim box where the colors extend to ensure that they are, are uh, not get off, uh, cut off during trimming. So you actually got just the information I was searching for and more. So it had even more to say about this. And it was using the context of this PDF. So uh, let's see if we can get some more information out of this. Uh, how does the layers in a PDF work? How does the layering work? So let's ask about that. And see if we can figure that one out. So it has said now that it could take up to 42 seconds to get an answer here. So I'm not sure if this is uh, what, what it, it's basing that on. If it's because it got the uh, previous answers in 42 seconds or something like that. And there it goes. According to the context provided, PDF portable document allows for specific specifying layers in JPX, J, uh, JPEG 2000 image extension format of a, a PDF document. Layers in a PDF are used to organize the stack, various graphical elements or content on top of each other. Each layer can contain visual elements such as text, images, shapes, etc. The order of the layer determines the elements appear on top of each other and then viewed or printed. The context uh, also mentions JPEG formats provide, includes provisions for describing layering and giving instructions on composition. Uh, however, the specifics on how to create and uh, manipulate layers in a PDF are beyond the scope of the information given. And it also gives me a reference to where in the PDF you can find this information. So let's take the last question here. Uh, let's see how many types of uh, fonts does the PDF format uh, support. Let's see if we can answer that one. Should be an easier question to answer, perhaps. I'm not sure if it, this document actually mentions how many, or if it actually has a number, or if it's just uh, listing them and saying uh, which types are supported. Uh, none of the questions that I've asked, asked the model now, I have asked before. So I'm not really sure what the answer is gonna be. I know pretty much the answers to these questions. So I could say if they are somewhat accurate. And when it comes to this layer image here, I wasn't really thinking about the uh, image extension. I was more thinking about how the layering is done uh, in a page. Let's see here. According to the context of the provided PDF support formats, including type one, type, uh, true type, open type, and SID keyed fonts. So uh, PDF supports at least four types of fonts. I would say that it's more like eight. Um, so you have type one, you have type two, uh, type three, you have type one A and B, and you have true type and yeah, C, uh, type fonts, of course. Uh, there is also one uh, postscript uh, version, which is uh, if it's type zero, I believe. So yeah, there, there is more to this and you can't really get all the answers, but it's, you can get help and you can talk to your document. So I think this is a pretty cool technology where you can provide your own uh, data and you, you, can't, uh, you can provide multiple uh, uh, text here. So you can add a bunch of different files and ask them questions. Um, and in the files, uh, you could use PDFs, of course, you could use normal text files. Uh, it supports uh, CSV files and so on. So there is a bunch of different options here. And as you saw, it was not hard to install just a couple of lines of code if you're running Ubuntu. 
Um, if you are running Windows, there is instructions for that as well on the GitHub repository page. Uh, so this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.